Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket explodes after liftoff, an air show accident takes a life, FAA reauthorization bill to be previewed. I'm Brie Cross, it is June 29th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Flying into space is a tough business, and we are sorry to say that after 18 successful flights of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, the resupply flight headed for the International Space Station on Sunday morning exploded 139 seconds after liftoff. SpaceX's Elon Musk tweeted a short comment shortly after the failure, noting, quote, Falcon 9 experienced a problem shortly before first stage shutdown. We'll provide more information as soon as we review the data, end quote. It's reported that he stated in a follow-up tweet that there had been, quote, an overpressure event in the upper stage liquid oxygen tank, end quote. The video of the flight shows no apparent instability or non-ballistic behavior, just a symmetrical flare-up in an upper portion of the vehicle and the progressive degeneration of the Falcon 9. The purpose of the flight was to resupply the International Space Station with more than two tons of food equipment and other provisions. This flight was the third ISS supply flight by three different launch providers to fail to deliver cargo in the last eight months. NASA has indicated that the occupants of the ISS are in no immediate danger and that a Russian supply flight is scheduled for July 3rd and another from the Japanese in August. ANN regrets to report that airshow pilot Steve Oberg has perished in an accident while conducting an airshow routine at the Cameron Air Show Saturday afternoon in Cameron, Missouri. At no time were the spectators at risk, as the pilot was performing in the designated airshow area. The red and white Pitts S2B apparently failed to complete a descending maneuver sequence and impacted the ground amid trees under circumstances yet to be properly documented. While videos of the accident have showed up, we will await official word from the NTSB before reporting about what could have gone wrong. Despite what was reported to be a fairly swift medevac from the site, Oberg perished from his injuries. Oberg had an impressive background. His military aviation career involved 23 years of flying various Army aircraft, including 400 combat hours in Iraq. Steve's extensive civilian flying background includes over 7,000 hours flying fixed-wing and rotary-wing aircraft. He was a respected member of ICAS. We at ANN offer our sincere condolences to Steve's family. After the break, FAA reauthorization bill likely to include user fees. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Concord's recombinant gas RG Series sealed battery technology produces a high-performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The Transportation and Infrastructure Committee of the U.S. House of Representatives will release the long-awaited draft FAA reauthorization bill on July 1st. The bill is expected to include provisions that would pull the air traffic control system out of the federal hands and impose a user fee for aircraft utilizing air traffic control services. According to a document posted on the Aviation Subcommittee website, Full Committee Chairman Bill Schuster said that federal efforts to modernize the system have been costly but ineffective. He points to progress being stifled by bureaucracy and aviation funding, 
remain subject to political uncertainty and budget battles. The reauthorization will provide comprehensive reform of the FAA and our aviation system, the document states. It also appears the proposed bill will include separating ATC from the FAA and using fee for services as the funding system. We at ANN forecast the road to ATC user fees will be full of potholes and we plan to dig a few of those potholes ourselves. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Arrow Video of the Week. Final lift off this amazing video brings up the question of just how thorough should our pre-flight inspection be. Watch the pilot as he realizes he has a feline passenger. Note, no animals were injured in the making of this video. Search Remove Cat Before Flight on YouTube. After these messages, Transport Canada launches a laser safety awareness program. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100 and ATX-100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Transport Canada has launched the Government of Canada Safety Awareness Campaign for lasers. The national campaign will provide the public with an easy-to-follow infographic, which clarifies the dangers and consequences of pointing lasers into airspace and how incidents can be reported. The FAA has initiated a safety reporting program called the Safety Review Process. The 18-month pilot program allows bargaining unit FAA employees who work in the Aircraft Certification Service to elevate safety concerns without fear of retaliation. Here's a case where modern technology could be a double-edged sword. Whale hunters in Alaska will be aided in their hunt by a UAV developed by a student at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks that makes the process easier. China has validated the FAA Supplemental Type Certificate for the installation of water scooping Whipline 10,000 floats on the Air Tractor 802 series aircraft. Whipline 10,000 floats transform the Air Tractor 802 series aircraft into single engine aerial firefighters. Increasing demand for civil and defense helicopters from transitioning economies is driving the global helicopters market, according to a new report. The report says the global helicopter market could exceed $37 billion by 2019. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Virgin Galactic now shows that they are more than a thrill ride for the 1% who can afford it. They recently announced signing a contract with OneWeb Limited to serve as one of its inaugural satellite launch providers. Under the terms of the launch services agreement, Virgin Galactic's Launch One rocket will perform 39 satellite launches for OneWeb. Beyond the firm contract, the agreement provides OneWeb with options for 100 additional launches. OneWeb, which on Wednesday announced new investment of $500 million backed by a group of equity partners, is building a global communication system it says will enable affordable broadband access around the world, including in areas currently unserved or underserved by terrestrial providers. 
Because Virgin Galactic's Launch One system uses an airborne launch, they can provide multiple launches in a short time for OneWeb. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.